Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jude Melling, um, one of the assistant principals at Bottisham Village College. At, at the moment, I'm the mental health lead. This presentation is a summary, really, of the journey that we've taken over the last year at Bottisham Village College uh, to address the rising prevalence of mental health uh, issues that really all schools are facing, not just Bottisham. Whenever you read the news, whenever you open up the paper, the press, listen to the TV, it won't be long before the subject of mental health is raised, as uh, Dickon said really this morning. The recent Millennium Cohort study has said that 850,000 15 to 16 year olds are actually suffering from some kind of mental health disorder with only 25% of them getting the help that they actually need. So clearly mental health is really high on school agendas and it's something that we need to address if all students are to be able to reach their full potential really in school. We are aware that there's been a gap really in support in um, schools with students presenting with issues um, that don't always meet thresholds for CAMH services. However, those students still need support in some kind of way and schools are kind of the front line really in dealing with that. For many years, Bottisham Village College has been involved in looking at mental health and trying to move forward with mental health, just like all schools. We were involved with recent TAMS project, um, Target Mental Health in Schools project, and from there our, our journey started quite a while ago really. And we've been trying to address um, this in all aspects of our school and gradually have built up an ethos really where it's just everybody's business now at the college and that, that's really the strap line, it has to be everybody's business. When we began the project with CAMH um, training team, the first task that we completed was an audit and using the model provided by Public Health England, which required that we look at all aspects really that we were covering, for example, the ethos, our school environment, um, what we taught within the curriculum, how we were already targeting support, uh, what staff development opportunities there were and so on. And it was, um, also important that we captured student views and we did that and it was really good because when I began that audit I was really fearful there would be big holes but when I pulled everything together it's just great to have a document which actually reflected the practice that actually we were covering really at Bottisham Village College. Alongside the audit we also completed action research um, firstly, by using our own health-related behaviour survey data. Um, and we used that with the pastoral leads at the school so that we just started to look at the data, how it compared with the county, and looked into, really, what that data was actually telling us. And one key strand that we identified was student perception, really, of safety. But, and we looked at things like confidence, uh, bullying, incidents that had happened to students within the last year, their feelings about internet safety and where they could go to seek support. Secondly, we used our links with the School University Partnership for Education Research or SUPA, we're a part of that group, and we were looking at the question that you can see there up on the screen. We completed questionnaires with students and then following analysis from those questionnaires with both super and the health related behavior survey, we explored outcomes more thoroughly using a set of agreed questions with the students, which we actually recorded so that we could really go through and analyze what they were saying. We ended up with a lot of rich data, which we're still evaluating. Um, but the outcomes really were very clear, very consistent, and, and there was one really strong message that came through from across all year groups, all ages, that for them, friendships was key to it all. And that friendships and those external support networks clearly have an absolutely significant uh, effect in being the protective factor, really, as they're growing older. Through the super project, we're continuing our research 
and looking at the links between peer support and resilience. And while this research is still continuing, we're already clear that we want to look at how we can enhance uh, the you know, effective peer-to-peer -peer relationships at the school. Our audit, our action research, and work with pastoral teams and student leadership teams has enabled us to come up with an action plan, and that's what we're working on at the moment. The aims we set out in the action plan have all been embedded now into our school improvement plan with the college leadership team and the pastoral teams and faculties all having an accountability for delivering on aspects of the plan. So some of the key points then, in, in terms of providing staff training, our pastoral teams have all attended the CAMH whole school briefing on mental health and well-being. Three of our staff now have undertaken the mental um, health first aid training. We have a member of staff attending the CAMH Foundation module and all of our staff were offered um, opportunities to attend personal well-being sessions on being happy, be calm and be confident, which were really well attended. In terms of support systems for students, we've worked hard on that this year. We've set up an e-safety support group for vulnerable students. We have a happy, healthy, stronger girls group. Uh, we've got new programmes for supporting angry boys. We're now exploring having a sexual health group. So we have a full programme of support also for students related to wellbeing, mental health, in the run-up for exam preparation. We've used external providers to uh, train, the, well, deal with the students really, to deliver these packages to students, but we've had staff alongside listening, observing, in the hope that ultimately they'll be able to take these groups so we'll have sustainability in the future for actually developing our own groups and continuing this package. Our intention is now to tell you a little bit more about the other three aspects that are up on the screen, which is to look at the policy development and to look at staff well-being and to tell you a little bit more about um, the student voice at the college. So what I'm going to do is to first hand over to the um, student leadership team who will be able to tell you a little bit more about their involvement and what they've been doing. Good afternoon, we are the Student Leadership Team, a group of Year 11 students who have a passion to enhance school life whilst working alongside staff. During our first five months since we've been appointed, we've taken on many projects with assistance from Student Voice. I'm now going to hand you over to Megan to talk more about Student Voice. Student Voice allows teachers to receive students' perspectives of the school, including what they like and dislike about it, taking action on students' thoughts. Student voice is giving students the ability to create a positive influence on our school. And as you can see, Bottisham has a chain of leadership which allows student voice to be heard. It enables advice and opinions to be heard from each end of the school, whether it's from teachers to students or students to teachers. The chain starts with individual pupils. Anyone and everyone can report ideas and opinions to either form reps or mentors. They then pass on the information to the student council and us, as the student leadership team, are heads of the council and help them to take action on what has been said. Our ideas are then reported to the college leadership team. All members of the team interact and work alongside us to ensure that all opinions are heard and acted upon. When we were chosen to become the student leadership team, we decided on three key aims and to try, to try and make the school a better place. Whilst we were making the decision, Mrs Melling came to us with research outcomes related to mental health and well-being. As a result, we decided to make one of our three key aims mentoring, because through this we feel that we could improve relationships between year groups and friendships in general. We want to make mentoring a bigger responsibility, providing younger students with more time and opportunities to speak with mentors. For mentoring, our plan is to introduce a four-week cycle. Our second key aim as a student leadership team is PSHE days. We feel that at our school they are not made the most out of and so we would like to improve them. 
Our goal is to make the days more interactive with creative activities. We would like to use student voice to plan and promote the days whilst also involving students in the delivery of the sessions. Our third and final key aim is extended learning. This is a completely new online system for homework, motivating students to commit to more extracurricular activities. I'm going to talk more about the four-week cycle we put in place to improve and evolve mentoring of younger students by the old ones in form time every week on a Wednesday. It includes an academic week where pupils can help younger ones with homework or revision. A social week where large group activities can be run or specific students can be taken out to be aided separately if need be. The next week focuses on the key idea of CREST here at BVC, a list of skills that involves out-of-school activities as well as in-school ones. They are creativity, reflection, enrichment, self-management and teamwork. This week involves logging any activities that involve these attributes onto a computer system in a time of reflection. The final week involves a talk or presentation to younger students about one of the mentor's hobbies or interests, hopefully building pupils' involvement in extracurricular activities. Overall, this creates a valuable experience aimed at improving relationships between the mentors and pu pupils in an engaging, interesting way. Next, we shall talk about the way that the, another way these relationships were built through the stressless. <laughs> Thank you. Through the. <laughs> through the Stress Less Workshop. Stress Less is a county-wide campaign that seeks to empower students to find positive solutions to reduce stress inside and outside of school. The key message from this campaign is Take Five, Feel Better, which enables students to come up with just five small changes to their daily routine, which they develop over five weeks to help them learn and cope and with and control everyday stress. We hope these changes will make a big difference to the student's mental well-being. The idea being that if we minimise stress now, then hopefully the risk of more severe mental health problems is reduced for students as they know of, sim as they know of simple coping me mechanisms to help minimise stress from their age now. A number of Year 11 students and Year, year 7 form tutors were trained on stress less by Mrs Saunders, our BVC Senko. On the first PSHE day of the year, Year 11 students delivered a two-hour session which included a range of activities, quizzes, games, group and class discussions and learning key facts about mental well-being. After the activities, each student completed an action plan, which is specifically tailored to their needs. The action plan contains five simple changes to improve everyday life. Parents were given information on the day along with a leaflet. You're never too young to talk mental health from Anna Freud so that parents can follow up and enforce the action plan. I will be talking about the student's response and the outcomes from the stress-less training. As you can see on the board, students felt the sessions were inclusive and engaging. It was also nice for the Year 7s to be able to share their thoughts and feelings with the older students. So here are some strategies the Year 7s incorporated into their five-week plan. As you can see, there are a variety of social, mental and physical daily improvements. So this slide displays the results. In graph one, you can see an, an increase in awareness in each category of the stress less. And in graph two, you can see an over 25% decrease in stress levels after the five weeks of introducing five new health improvements. Thank you very much. Our biggest priority for the year um, when we set out on the project was to develop a robust policy that would recognise existing practice in areas such as behaviour and anti-bullying, diversity and safeguarding. But we wanted to provide clear processes to help identify young people with possible mental health problems and have a more targeted approach to, with plans and pathways for referral if required. We collaborated on the policy development with the CPFT and with the LSCB, so I felt that I was really privileged, really, to be able to work alongside expert teams to be able to help guide us in that process, to ensure that the policy was joined up 
and reflected the reality of what external agencies and schools were actually responsible for. The policy itself covers areas such as teaching about mental health, signposting, warning signs to look out for, managing disclosures, confidentiality and consent, working with parents, supporting peers. The appendices include further information about mental health issues, sources of support that are available uh, for issues such as self-harm, anxiety, eating disorders, suicidal feelings. There's also a really important appendix on staff well-being. The policy incorporates the latest thinking and resources for support from the Thrive model developed by Anna Freud Centre and adopted within the county. This model offers a set of principles and values that acknowledge that, that some individuals through universal or preventative services thrive and they can get the advice or support that they actually need through um, managing, self-managing really, through maybe using online support like the keepyourhead.com website. Some, however, experience more complex difficulties and may need a more targeted service approach, maybe for short term time, and maybe need sessions from groups like Centre 33. Some need more help, maybe for longer evidence-based sessions and perhaps might need guidance from community services like uh, CAMH services, access via the SPA or the single point of access. We know that a small minority will need to help cope with the risks presented to them, requiring specialist intervention and multi-agency approaches. Guidance on pathways and those um, who, who need help at each, at each and any one of these stages um, have within the policy got guidance to pathways and routes that can be taken and lots of sources that can be used and looked up for help, be it in books or online. I'm really pleased to say that this policy, although we've wrote it largely speaking at Bottesham and it's our school policy, it is going to be made available to all of you if you'd wish to have it. And it's going to be available on the website that's um, in your packs. If it will be a PDF version, if you would like to have a Word version of it because you would like to work on it, adapt it, amend it, change it for your own school's use. If you contact Anna Cook, again, her email is just underneath the website. It's on the agenda, so it's there for you. Then please do make contact, but it will be there with all the other um, presentations I think from today on the on the website for you to actually have. The policy obviously needs to be adapted and amended for your own school's needs in relation to the emotional well-being and mental health of your own students and staff but I really do hope that that policy is going to be useful for all the students in our care really and also for the staff. Talking about the staff, I'm going to hand over now to Phil, who's been working on the mental and on the staff wellbeing strand within the college. Thank you. I'm going to talk about what loosely, and I'm going to walk around, apologies, loosely described as the forgotten people. Tom Sherrington mentioned on one of his tweets, and you saw it, about we focus so much on the students, on making sure that they've got all that they need, that sometimes we forget about ourselves. And we forget about the fact that not just ourselves, but our colleagues and the people in the wider community of the school, are we getting the support we, act, we actually need? And it's one thing that we sat down as a, with Jenny, the management team, and said, it's something we really need to look at. Because how are we expecting to ask our teachers, our support staff, to deliver outstanding lessons or great lessons, what terminology you use, if they don't feel great themselves? If they're having issues, how on earth are they going to impact on our, on our students? So we looked at a few things. From an organisational perspective, if we think from a management point of view, there's, there's, there's some real issues. £522 is the latest figure from the latest research study that shows that an average member of staff would cost an establishment a year due to absence. Now, that absence was largely, it was something like 40 something percent was stress-related. Okay, it was stress-related absence, £522. If we equate that to the number of days that goes, 6.3 days per member of staff on average 
they're missing working in education. Now, from a management hat, that's very costly, but also from a parent hat, a teacher hat, the progress of those students who are missing those, the teacher not being there, is priceless. So it's kind of this thing on the board. And you can see there about the work-life balance, and it's one of the things that it really grates me, that work-life balance, because it, it, it's different for everybody. But there's a quote on there by Ross Morrison McGill that you can see. We see in schools, we squash the equivalent of a full working week and often more into 39 weeks. Okay, we feel as if we have to cram it into that period of time. So it's incredibly intensive. Ask anybody who's married to someone who works in education or like myself, if you're married to someone that works in education, you realise those evenings and weekends during term time are not really evenings and weekends. Or if they are, they're probably <coughs> shipping your kids off to different activities or sitting there doing... There's no time. There's no time. We're kind of on the treadmill, aren't we? When's the next holiday? How many times do you see it? I always say, and then one member of staff at our school is absolutely hilarious. I say to him, do you have a good holiday? Absolutely fantastic. Seven and a half weeks till the next one. <laughs> and it's, it's like, really? Is that, is that the way we, our mind is working now? Is that, surely that can't, be, that can't be right. So surely our well-being, people that work in education, has got to be at the forefront. Surely we've got to actually spend a little bit of time thinking to us. And one of those earlier slides says, it doesn't have to be a nice-to-have policy in the school. OK, let's get everything else done. And if we've got anything left, we'll put that time into the staff well-being. Well, maybe we need to flip it. Maybe we need to change our perspectives and think, if we can get that part right, what impact is that going to have on everybody else? There's a, an article that research study that Jude, Jude sent to me, and we went through it, and I then looked at three or four different articles just to weave it all together. But Sue Roffey came up with, with that in her article. It said, additional stress on teachers working in this unrealistic, performance-driven environment. I agree, it's very unrealistic. Okay, what we have to cram into the space of time and the strategies that we have to put in has a negative impact on them, which in turn must impact on the health and well-being of the students in the classroom. We <coughs> see it every day. You see it. If that member of staff is not tipped off, if they're not feeling great, the run up to Christmas and a student, or let's say, maybe if you've got children, your child at home does something which is not outrageous, which is not completely out the norm, but if you're not feeling great, what do you do? Boom, you attack them. Okay, and you behave rather very rationally. And are you giving them the support that they actually need because you haven't got the support? So it's quite an interesting thing. So we actually sat down and I sat down and did lots of different, again, research again and trying to find out what does this mean? What is this well-being? What is this work-life balance? And I, I changed my career path. Five years I was in the pastoral support and I made a brave decision to step and do something slightly different and I always had in my mind I know what it is I need time I need that magic time if only I had more time and I slowly realized that's the wrong answer we don't need time we need you can see the things down there we need to be valued we need to have that love and that passion for what we are doing it's not time if you've got more time you've got more time to think about the fact that you're not happy and you're a bit stressed and you're not feeling tip top so we have to feel valued we have to be in an organization where we're respected we listen to Okay, and the fact we're working towards that common goal, which is why I mean, the, the wellbeing policy that's sitting on the desk behind me is fantastic. Everybody working towards that common aim. And that one thing, everything's based on trust. How many times have we heard that word today? Okay, I know the students mentioned it about the fact that if there is an adult that they trust that they can speak to, they feel happy. Do we have that? Do we have someone that we trust in education? Or is our line manager possibly someone that we don't want to share that with because it shows that we're weak? Okay. Who knows? It's about changing those different things. So that was kind of all the research that came in. So we sat down and we put out a questionnaire to staff and it was deliberately ambiguous. It wasn't, are you happy? Are you sad? When do you feel? It wasn't like that. We were trying to delve a little bit deeper into what the th thoughts and the feelings of the staff were. So it was anonymous and it went out to everybody. It went out to teachers, it went out to support staff, it went out to admin workers. So we could get a really clear idea, we're in this together, how are we feeling? You only have to open the newspaper and suddenly it goes, this number of teachers leaving. We can't recruit, we can't interview. The training systems are not right. I tell you what, we'll give bursaries to people to try and get them in education. It's not a thriving place to be unless you're in it. We're in it, we know it's the best job in the world. Okay, but it's about making sure that we can retain those people in that position. So we did the analysis and the findings were staggering. It was the same as what I was thinking. We don't need time, we need to feel valued. We need to be working towards a common goal. We need to have that trust. 
We need to have the resources in order to do our job. They wanted to do their job and they wanted to do their job properly. They just needed the tools to be able to do it. So we then came up with, if those of you that know me, you'll know that it has to be cheesy. Okay, but we came up with a cheesy, catchy thing for our school and we called it Happy Healthy Bottisham. And we want to actually have a policy for staff that could link into the student well-being everything policy that everybody could buy into. So we had an aim and we launched it a whole staff meeting. And you can see the aim on the board there. We wanted it to be productive. We didn't want it to be woolly. We didn't want it to be cheesy or just a scene. Oh, this is quite nice. We've got a nice logo. We can't do it. It needed to be productive. It needs to be embedded. Okay, which is, and I'll explain a little bit more in a bit about how we're rolling it out to embed it in our, in our culture. It needs to be inclusive. It's everybody. Okay, some people, including myself, I put, I didn't think I needed the support. We all need that support. So it is for everybody. Okay, it needs to be present. It needs to be live. It needs to be there. It needs to be seen. Okay, that focuses on, and this, I think this is the key, but this early intervention. Not when it's too late. Not when you're down that road, of someone, road and someone's not there, but that early intervention where actually we can pick things up quite quickly, like we do with our students, and we can put that in. So we came up with two ideas, really. We came up with a whole staff approach and a targeted approach, and we wanted to make sure the launch that people would buy into and feel that actually we're changing this mindset. We're changing the thing that you matter. We need to. So we, we launched it at a whole staff conference, and then we had an introductory workshop with... Dr. Rena Katecha, which someone mentioned mindfulness earlier. She does neurological mindfulness. So we invited her in and we said to the staff about the Im impact and the benefits of mindfulness. And we ended up having 40 staff sign up for a, a workshop on a Friday night after school. So she came and delivered her workshop. And I have to say, it really made me think. It really made me think of different bits. So we then decided the best thing to do was get her in. And we're running two cohorts on a Friday night for an hour and a half subsidised by the school, but a little bit of staff buy in when they can run it. So we've got 16 on cohort, one that are currently doing it straight away. The staff saw that it was live, it was present, it was happening. And actually, we care about you. We're subsidising this, okay? We care about what actually happens. If we want this performance culture in our schools where a member of staff is standing there and delivering their great lesson without thinking about all the other things that is happening, they're live there in that moment, we need to support them. So that's, that's how we launched it with the the whole staff approach. And it, it kind of looks like, like this, although this will be rolled out thing. We're on about phase three of 10 in my mind of our, of our checkpoints. So we've got different things and we'll just go through them quickly. This is our, our first one, which again is a cheesy title, but we have our happy, healthy champions. Now we have a self-selected group. This group of people was kind of targeted by me initially for the first two or three, but then it grew wider. And it's people who have a particular a role within the school. We can say there we have a staff football group that play on a Friday every night. Now we can't take credit for the happy healthy thing for the staff football. They've played for a while but why not we make it more live? Suddenly we, rather it's gone from teachers who had the flexibility to play football on a Friday night because they could to we now have support staff working in there. We have one of our ICT team who's now restructured the working day so he can join in on that and we have a member of staff who is responsible for putting all that together. We have a running club which is run by an NQT. And every Wednesday night, they go out for a run after school, ranges between two and 12, and then he designs a training program for them if they want it, so they can continue to do it outside. We have a book club, the Great Reading Exchange, we've called it, where members of staff can put a book in and they can just leave a post in, no, they can change it, they can talk, they can have a little bit of a thing. Social media for CPD. I've got myself into Twitter recently, okay? Ever said I never would, but it's only for professional purposes, apart from a few golfers on there. But and it's, it's one of those, it's magical, but it's a minefield. I had no idea how to work it. So we have a happy, healthy champion who can answer people's questions on that. Music, culture, languages, food and drink, which I love. We have our catering guy, who's our food and drink, who's doing the power lunchbox. What should teachers put in their lunchbox to take to school? Because how many times do we deliver a lesson? We've got a couple of minutes, what do we do? We go and get a tea or a coffee. Well, that dehydrates us more, that gives us more of a headache. So we think that leads into coming up with our newsletter. So those happy, healthy champions do an article for the newsletter, which comes out, the first one comes out just before Christmas. And we have things in there, we have our research articles. Rather than me standing up or the happy, healthy champions standing up talking, we have actually have documents in there which supports what we're saying. The article from Sue Roffey was sent out to the whole members of staff. We sent out some stuff from Teacher Toolkit talk, talk about the five minute staff wellbeing plan. If you haven't seen it, it's well worth a, a look up. But for teachers to actually do, we got articles in there about the role of the staff room. Okay, in terms of well-being. Now, how many schools now 
have eradicated their staff room, which phenomenal really. Our, we call it the Bottisham buzz. Okay, you walk into the staff room and it is fantastic. No matter what lesson you've had or what part of the day, you walk out there feeling better than when you've walked in. And what a big thing that is. And we've got some articles in there. Helpful links and, and tip, things that people need help with that can just be on there and they can come in. Staff interviews about people that are doing things and then photos of other bits. And then we've got our, which I think is absolutely crucial, our Healthy Body, Healthy Mind programme. Okay, if we want staff to feel great, we need to give them the opportunity to do it. So like we say, we have the staff football on a Friday, we have the mindfulness on a Friday. Gym and swim access is coming for the staff that they'll be able to use. We have the running club, which has changed days now to a Wednesday. We have yoga on a Thursday in the drama studio, which is it's not a formal yoga. This is not you sign up and you have to come in, but it's a member of staff who leads the yoga now as a happy, healthy champion. And if you want on a Thursday at four o'clock, you can go in there and do a little bit of yoga. Don't have to, but if you want to and you feel that you need to, go. And again, it's ranged from seven to 11 to 13 people, depending on, on what it's be. And they grumbled. This week it was cancelled for parents' evening, so they weren't, they weren't that happy. Okay. Then we've got things that will filter in after the mindfulness has finished about giving the teachers access to, to the app so they can focus on their mindfulness after the cohorts and the different bits. This is all evolving all of the time. So that list, I imagine, if I speak to you again down the line, will be bigger because people are coming out of the woodwork and saying, can I run that? I'd like to do this. I have an interest in that. Then we have the staff enrichment trips, which our first one is on Saturday. So if anyone is around Wiccan at half past 10 on Saturday, the members of staff are going on a three hour walk and then going to the pub after for some food and a drink. And again, you don't have to sign up, but one member of staff has decided that actually he really enjoys walking. And to be fair, I'm not going to pick on him. He might not on a weekend have lots of people to go walking with, or he might want to go walking with different people. So there's about 13 signed up at the minute. Families, so he did the walk to make sure people can take their buggies with their children and their dogs can go. So they're having that on Saturday. We've got reef making happening on the 7th of December. So we've got an external coming in who's a friend of someone who works at the school. So it's not really costing a lot deal. <coughs> Two hours and at the end of it, they take away a Christmas reef that they can hand on their door. Okay, not massive stuff, but for those eight people that signed up for that, that's quite a big deal. That's something that they're looking forward to and it gets you in that different bit. So you can see the lots of things that are gonna are happening over, this, over the year that, that, will that will take place. Then we have this, which is one of the things that it needs a really, really big sell when we do this one after Christmas, because we don't want to patronise people. Sometimes when you get a pat on the back for saying, well done, you're doing your job well, sometimes you can feel as if to say, well, I've done that all the time. Why have you not thanked me for it before? So this is not designed for that. We call it the, the Fred Award. So basically, friendliness, resilience, enthusiasm, dedication. That's us, isn't it? That's what we do as professionals. Okay, but it's a chance for other colleagues just to say, actually, what you did the other day was above and beyond. That was really, really good. And they just pop it in the box. Really, really simple. Just pop it in there. Then every half term, we'll pull it out. We'll have a little look at them and we'll have a little prize draw. So if your name's in there, you've got an opportunity to take a bottle of wine home at the end of the half term, a box of chocolates. Just that little thing, like we say, not patronising, not actually, we'll do, but this small little gesture to say, actually, that thing that you did, we noticed. Okay, and anybody can put into that box. Okay, it's not top down, it's not bottom up, anybody can put into that box, which is quite, for me, quite a powerful, a powerful thing. Then we have, you probably come across and you've had something called a teach meet, where we sit down and we discuss educational topics. Now we've rebranded ours, and the first one that will come up will be kind of creative marking, we're going to do it. How do we actually make marking not labour intensive, but still have the massive impact so it's an opportunity for people to come before school sit around a table and talk it's not linked to performance management if people say i'm really struggling with my marking i'm struggling with time it's really stressing me out we're not going to sit at the back and mark it down and say oh they're struggling they need a bit of help and support it's not like that it's not that environment it's an environment for people to come and talk and develop their skills develop their their, their toolkit so that that hopefully when we have the first one coming up very soon will help staff out staff out an awful lot this is where it gets slightly more serious. This is where it gets that thing. At the minute, it's, it's nice, it's jovial, it's right. If you want to partake in one of these activities, please do. And lots of staff do, and lots of staff are buying into it. And it's rolling out, as we say, every week, there's someone else coming out and saying, can I do that, can I do this? This is where we actually go, this person needs a bit of help. This person really does need a little bit of support. Yeah, we've invited them on the walk. Yes, we've given them a Fred Award, okay? But 
I feel it's impacting their life. I feel we need to do something. So you can see the different models down on there, okay? We have a coaching model. So in the minute we're discussing about training up a team of coaches, across the, who can actually target helping those people. And it could be that a head of faculty, someone in the school nominates that person and just says, look, I really feel they need a little bit of support and guidance. It could be that someone like we had last year actually comes and says, help. Okay, I need a little bit of support. So what do we actually put into place? And this is where hopefully the wellbeing policy that we've got and then the outside agencies, we can actually tap into and give the staff the same support that our students get. Because how many times do we have a member of staff who needs the support? It's not available. It's not there. So what do you do? You have a nice little chat with your line manager and you go, well, you go home and you say, everything will be all right. I'll have a glass of wine and then by Monday we'll all be happy. It doesn't work like that. So we're hopefully looking down and coming in these bespoke things. And this is where your help, if you're in education or you're an outside agency, we will hopefully tie into so we can train members of staff up in the school to spot the signs of the mental, the mental health problems that we can actually develop it into. So I like to say, we're in the early days. We thought about it in the summer term. We launched it to staff and we've rolled out probably step three of 10. But is it making a difference? We'll find out when we do the results. But cheese as it sounds, the buzz is there. The buzz is there. Okay, thank you. We've still got further to go on our journey. We know that the government green papers due out really any time now, and um, from reading in the press, it would appear that that paper will look at the interface really between the internet. Um, internet use and mental health issues for young people and it's something that we will be looking at and we intend to develop that further. Last week we put an awful lot of effort into anti-bullying week like many schools and uh, we had assemblies for all year groups. We also had the most inspirational visit from Sir Ian McClellan who held this entire school spellbound for an hour um, it, was, it was just an amazing thing and I think that something will live in long in the memories of all that actually were there. But we're going to build on that. Uh, Sreen was there um, on behalf of the Gay Equality Charity Stonewall. And we're working now on building on the messages that he actually introduced for us and to the students. And this week we've launched the No Bystanders campaign. So there's still a lot of work to be done in that area. We started to look at um, gaining a well-being award as well to recognise and accredit some of the work that we've been doing just to make sure that we are on top of what we're doing and keeping going and, and moving forward. Bottom Village College is also part of a bid that's been made to the Strategic School Improvement Fund and the purpose of that bid is to further work that's begun um, with, to make social, emotional, mental health and well-being everybody's business, enabling schools to have the structure and the capacity and the ethos to emanate that good practice. The bid is a collaboration between a range of mental health services and schools across the county, and we're still waiting to hear whether that bid's been successful. Um, we're planning next week um, to carry on looking at a bit of a pilot that will then continue after Christmas with Cambridge United Community Trust who are working alongside Centre 33 and we're going to be delivering units of work to um, our Year 8 students. As regards the policy that's been produced, I've got a couple of paper copies here if people want to actually have a look at it, but please don't take them away. They will be available on the website. I'm aware that as soon as you write anything, it kind of it already becomes out of date and new things actually arise. So one thing that we've been talking about uh, with CAMH is how we can make sure that that policy is updated and new initiatives, new ideas are fed into it. And there is a really good intention that that will be an annual thing and that every year on the website you'll be able to see the renewed policy. Obviously, it's been written from a secondary school point of view as well. It's been written from a secondary point school of view, and what we're going to do is to see if a um, team of experts really can look at that also from a primary 
school point of view. It's adaptable, but it might be that there are uh, key ideas, policies, websites that are more relevant to primary schools and they can be slotted in to your policies. I'd like to think that in future, we can continue to work together to share good practice. We've so much to learn from each other. I've outlined our school journey at Bottisham and given you to date some of the ideas that we've had. And I'm well aware that other schools are developing their own ideas and having their own journeys. And I just think that collaborating, working together is a powerful thing. And if we could find some kind of forum to continue to do that in the future, then I just think it would be beneficial all round. So thank you very much.